Hello and welcome back to another video on the Age of Bison YouTube channel. My name is Serge Shark Dad, and we are continuing with our series on Civilization Spotlights, where we are doing a deep dive into an individual civ, going over the strengths, its weaknesses, its bonuses, and hopefully providing a comprehensive introduction to anybody who's looking up to pick up a new civ and learn about it. And then we'll also be demonstrating the opening standard build order for you to know, so that way you can go right into some multiplayer and start to learn how to use the civ. So today, we are covering another Iberian um, Peninsula Civ. So the last video that we did was Portugal, and then now we are gonna be covering Spain. Today I'm joined here by Dunamai, who is our resident Spain expert. And as you can see, my level is not terribly high. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna have him come in, give us a conversation about how to play Spain properly. So, you know, Dunamai, can you tell me, you know, Spain's a, pretty stock standard Civ. I think people would, you know, know about them. They seem to be like the kind of all rounder as far as I can understand. Um, so go ahead and tell me a little bit about like them, their civilization bonuses and, and the strengths that you want to play to as a player. Like what is Spain all about? All right. So Spain has actually a lot of civilization bonuses, much more than is said on the, on the can. Uh, the main civilization, but the one they are known for is the tech tree says faster shipment from the home city basically it goes like this you need less xp from your first shipment and the less xp from the second uh it's imagine germany but the opposite uh, whereas germany needs like i think it's now 10 percent xp more uh if i remember correctly it was nerfed but i think uh, spain needs 20 percent xp less to get the shipments um <clears throat> so the nice thing about it is that those shipments come faster. Um, it enables you to have uh, to that whatever strategy you want to play, you have like this tempo thing when you're always at least one shipment ahead your, of, of your opponent. And when that shipment can be, for example, five Hussar at like nine minutes game time, you can definitely understand like with equivalent economies having like just five Hussar more in on the battlefield or uh, get to squeeze in an eco card uh, or even like you know a thousand wood to, to really get ahead that's spain's strength um there are other civilization strengths for example they start with a dog uh this is a civilization that has two scout units um you can think for example about uh, india or japan uh, there's a, diff a lot of different way you can use it because the dog cannot obviously pick up treasures but you can use it as a scout unit you can use it just to reinforce your existing units if you know there's big treasures on the map and your explorer can also train other dogs you can have up to five war dogs those war dogs shadow tech with ages so that may that gives spain uh, uh, a unit that can rush in and kill either pike or skirmishers in h2 in melee nice uh, and it's pretty decent uh you, you really don't want to mess with mess with these dogs and, unless you have like a decent mass and really enable spain to get like this a cheap threatening unit uh at pretty much all stages of the game uh, as long as the mass of units you're facing is not too high because you're gonna only have five dogs and those dogs don't have the best HP. And the, uh, do you go and count the civilization unique unit as strength or we will, will we go on those units afterwards? Um, yeah, I mean, if you wanna talk about like, like a uniqueness, like not necessarily like the stock center <clears throat> units that you can build, but you know, if you wanna talk about the missionary, if that's something that you wanted to point out, that's, I think that's well yeah, worth exactly. it. Yeah. All right, uh, the one last big civilization strength that is not exactly through a unit is a card called Arction, which gives an aura to your missionaries that are zero pop priests that are fast and can heal as much as another priest. Um, this action card gives them an aura that's around like 40 unit radius, so it's, it's really big, uh, more than a mortar's range to give you an idea. Uh, and in this aura, every cavalry and infantry unit just gets plus 20% attack for free. Wow, okay. I mean, so that enables Spain 
in late game because it's a pretty slow shipment to have this strong late game potential of threatening units mm -hmm. um you don't expect Spain to outshoot civilization like France in the skirmisher duel, and suddenly the skirmishers just gains like, I think in long late games, like eight attack with action, and they become monsters. Um, so this, this is a really interesting, unique ability uh, that Spanish has that is quite like uh, the, 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 the community plaza on, on War Dance mode. Yeah. So you, if you're a native player, you can think about that. But all the units in there just get a plus twenty percent. So it's like I think it's like twenty five people dancing mm -hmm. uh, um, at the community plaza. So it's it's really a big, big, big power spike. Impressive. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so those are the bonuses. Uh, of course, there's a ton of other bonuses that are baked into the sieve that we'll get on, get on later. For example, the lancers in itself. Or road arrows are bonus of the sieve, but those are unique units. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, what are some <clears throat> What are some general weaknesses then? You know, you've you stated the strengths here. It, it seems like, you know, they get a lot of good power spikes. They have a have a pretty strong late game with unction. So, what are some of the pitfalls of the sieve that that players need to be looking out for and, and always accounting for in their games? All right. So, Spain's roster is really wide, and you can do a lot of things. If you get to h3 in h2 uh if you want to attack in h2 as spain uh you are pretty much stuck with two um military archetypes which is musk hus or cross pike the cross pike is not amazing it's decent by all means uh but it's not like amazing mm -hmm. um the musk hus is quite literally stock standard um the, the you can't buff the musk uh, but you do get an attack card and an hp card in h2 um, and a combat card in h3 uh, the spanish hussar is really strong you can you can triple card the spanish hussar and cavalry in general like even the dragoon cavalry combat works on the dragoon the two h2 card of hp and attack does not mm -hmm. uh, they do not sorry it's just uh, for hand cav. But uh, so they do get strong cav, but you won't get like uh, as Dutch a skirm in H2. And you won't get that much of a military presence in H2 through shipments. Spain does not get uh, ranged infantry shipments uh, that are non mercenaries until H4. So if you want to have like a big mass of unit, you can't use shipments to do it. Okay. Uh, the only range infantry shipment you'll have in H2 is the Irish Brigadier. And it's a really nice card and I do recommend it in H2 when you're pushed by some range infantry. Um, you don't have a Hussar card in H2. The only cards you get in H2 are Pikemen and Road Lero, which is a fast melee infantry unit. So this is one of uh, Spain's biggest weaknesses, is that the amount of military shipments you get to defend yourself is very exploitable. They are all of one kind. If you think, for example, France, they have crossbow or hussar. Uh, Dutch have pike or hussar. You know, you always get two types. Spain does not, unless it's mercenaries. Um, so this is one of the a glaring weakness of Spain, that you are weak against strong h2 pushes that hit before you can do a fast fortress because then you're kind of caught you want to go h3 to really use your power shipments uh but then again you're stuck because you may not be able to reach h3 there are strategies that have been developed especially in de uh for example the spanish logistician that enables you to defend against those h2 rushes very effectively at the price of, you know, spending a lot of shipment in H2 and thus not being able to send a lot of them in H3. Um, but this is like a strategy we may not cover because it's a, quite a, a, a hard, a, a substantially harder strategy than the Spanish FF that we will cover today, that will be the stock standard build for, for, for the new uh, aspiring Spain main. Gotcha. Okay. And also I've heard that, um, 
you know, some there's some talk about how Spain is is not particularly good in the late game. I, you know, is that is that true in DE? You know, is that continue to be true in the new patches, or or would you push against that? I kind of want to push against that for two reasons. The first is function. Um, I'm not a 3D player, so maybe some 3D player can chime in in the comments. But Unction Spain was never something you laughed at on, on in 3D. And I tend to take 3D as my reference to how, you know, at the very limit of, of, of supremacy, how do you do in late game? Um, you also have uh, another card in each for this is called Peninsula Guerillas. Uh, that increases all the ranged infantry damage from uh, two, for, two, for tw uh, by twenty percent. Sorry, uh, and it re it's subsequently reduced to ten percent for all musket infantry. But you can take crossbow and have like plus twenty percent of them. You can take uh, grenadiers if you wanted to, like any ranged infantry. Uh, you also have pretty decent native guards. You have. Um, a good buff card, a lot of eco cards that are very decent. You get your stock standard refrigeration, you get Royal Mint, um, you get good uh, plantation cards if you wanted to, uh, sorry, estates cards if you wanted to. Um, the problem with Spain, I'd say, is you don't have a deck that would, uh, would enable you to do both. Like, you want to be aggressive in some age, use this fact that you can, you know, uh, send shipment after shipment after shipment and and your opponent will feel like he's a nail and you just keep hammering him with shipment but if he survived this more often than not you will have depleted your deck very fast and if you do that Spain will indeed be weak in late game but just because you essentially have expressed all that your deck can do and you're just stuck without a deck but if you build your deck more geared towards the late game Spain, by any means, as a decent late game. The Dragoons are serviceable, all of their uh, infantry is serviceable. They have stock standard artillery, but the artillery is good. They even have the four color range shipment that Malta, uh, that Malta didn't get. Like, Malta only has three color range shipments. Uh, Spain does have power shipments in each four. It's just... Again, uh, if you if you have your deck uh, made for the Spanish FF, your late game will feel weak just because you built your deck to to just hammer down your opponent. Okay, gotcha. Well, let's uh, you know we keep referencing the deck, so let's go ahead and and go ahead and build one. I have this test deck right. set up, so you know um, it's a it's a blank slate, and so we're just going to go age by age. So, what in age one do you feel is going to be standard? for any Spain deck? So I, I add three cards. Uh, the first two are like super standard. That Those are three villagers and capitalism. Capitalism is not always standard for all Civ, but let me explain you why it's very good for Spain. When you have the opportunity to have a, a, a good TP, imagine you're, for example, you're in Great Plain. When you start from Great Bank, you know you just have a TP socket right next to your base. Um, and there are some... You can you can get some wood uh, wood shipments uh, in, in on Great Plains. Even better is Korea. Korea is full of wood treasures. And you have a, uh, a trading post socket. If you do a TP and get some wood to make a house, because you start with only 200 wood with Spain, you essentially get two shipments for free in each one. Then you need to think, what do I want as a shipment? And capitalism is amazing for Spain. Whatever your deck wall is, whatever your strategy is, you will always need coin for with with Spain, and you will drain coin quite quickly in, later on in the game. Even if you're doing crossbow and pike, eventually you want to add some hussars to round it up. But even your st stock standard. As fortress, when you're at fortress, you will go more and more towards, you know, lancers or rodleros, and this coin that you have built up through capitalism 
Captain's game gives you a hundred coin per minute. You know, if you're like at eleven minutes and you send the, uh, this shipment at three minutes, it's already eight hundred coin. That's like the coin for about nine minutes. So that's amazing. Right. That's a really strong shipment, and the only reason why other don't send it is either they don't have the luxury of having two shipments, or they just don't have it. So it's really a good thing to consider for Spain, and uh, I put it in pretty much all of my decks. The third one I would put in H1, in H1 is Action. Uh, so the reason why I put Action is you can consider Action, and that's that's a bit weird and or, or, you know rough saying it like that, but it's your get out of of late game jail free card. Uh, if you have enough uh, resources, then as you know, population efficiency becomes one of the key factors of who will win because everyone can go to a 200 pop. Unction essentially says like the attack uh, efficiency of all of your cav and infantry just goes up by 20% across the board. And this is an aura. And if you're in Imperial Age, for example, you take all of the upgrades and then you add 20% on top of it. The way that it works is that if you have no upgrade, this is equivalent to a veterancy upgrade. But if you have all of the upgrades, it's equivalent to more than a guard upgrade. Wow. How it's many missionaries really, do you need really to, to get so that 20%? All, yeah, you need all 10 missionaries okay. to get the effect. It's basically 2% per missionary. Okay. Um, the nice thing about it is, yeah, but I'm going to lose army size because I have missionary. Well, no, because missionaries are zero pop. So not only do you get 20%, with no pop cost, but you also get healing because at the end of the day, Zoda priests. Uh, so it's really an amazing card, and it's not that bad in terms of you know uh, deck plays because it's an age one shipment. You can always fit it in there somewhere. Uh, sometimes some people don't take it because they really feel like I I I'm planning to get crushed in late game, and if I if I ever go to late game, is that I failed to you know, make significant damage, and that is fine. Uh, but I feel like, especially if you are an aspiring Spanish man and don't have, like, the experience to finish a game as Spain, it's really nice to just know, like, I've, did a bit of, I've done a bit, little bit of damage. It's fine, I don't have to finish right now. And I can just, like, you know, have this buffed army and keep, like, uh, hurting them more. Uh, it's, it's really a late game thing. Okay, but definitely some that micro is going to be required on the part of the player in order to utilize mm -hmm. that as you're moving, you know, just for them to, if you're watching this video, just as you're moving your armies around, mm -hmm. you know, these guys, you're going to have to keep them. It is an aura, so it helps, but you, you know, keep them in a control group and, you know, as you're moving your units around, make sure that you are keeping up with, with those as well. It's just another piece to be mindful of when you have 10 of these running mm -hmm. around. So that is true. And I'm, I'm going to give you the worst and best advice if you're an aspiring Spanish man. <laughs> uh, if, if you're experienced with Spain, by all means, never do this. But you can put in them in your calf group. And even if they have, like, not the best HP, the sheer fact that they will increase the power of your charge by 20% attack can be worth enough. If you're like floating resources like crazy, of course, if you want to be conservative of your resources, by all means, put them in a control group, move them around. They will be targeted by your opponent if your opponent knows what he's doing. But if you're just beginning, I, I think that it's fair to do that because it's better to have these guys die and soak up damage and have this aura than just forgetting about them. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, so these are your three standard in age one, so let's move into age two. So age two, it's super funny because every Spain main will like cry at each other for how wrong their age two is, but that's fine. L let's do one anyway. <laughs> uh, so personally, uh, 
my trifecta, and I think every Spain main will agree with that one, is five villagers, 700 wood, 700 coin. Th there's no debate about those three. Um, why is that? Well, remember how I said that you need less XP than others for, sp for Spain to, to, to get a shipment? Those are standard shipment. And five villagers even considered good. Some civilizations don't have it. Think Dutch, they just have the four. So basically what is there is that those three shipments that are standard, they cost, I'd say, 0 0.8 shipments to send. And that is amazing. Yeah. When you think about it. And those are the three shipments that have the most value in each two. So you always include them because not only they are the same as other European civilization shipment, they cost less to send. So those guys are pretty much a no-brainer. The rest is where it gets interesting. So the deck we're going to try today is the Spanish Fast Fortress. FF stands for Fast Fortress. So your goal in H2 is twofold. You have in there some technologies that could help you uh, win the game later on because there's a lot of stuff in each two. You want those some of those technologies. You also want to be able to survive uh, someone, you know, doing early pressure. And we want to be able to uh, send at least a unit shipment if you feel like the pressure is too much. So what I tend to add is two cards to defend and then three cards of, uh, of technologies. The two cards to defend are seven rods and the Irish Brigadiers. Okay, what are Irish... what are Rodella Rose? So, okay, so we're going to go on, this, on the unique units right now. Uh, Rodella Rose, imagine a pikeman, but you trade their uh, siege ability for a much, much faster speed, 20%, though Rodella Rose move at 6 speed, and 40% melee resists. So basically what Road Leros means is you can beat anything pop efficiently in melee. And you can get there unless it's against Dragoons. And even Dragoons will have a hard time escaping Road Leros if just one rod, you know, hits with the sword because they, they can snare. So this is this unique uh, Spanish unit that really makes hand infantry uh, strong like they can move fast they can catch up to cav if the other player is not uh, paying attention they have a huge multiplier against cav um, it's actually it's basically it's 11 attack time 3.5 against cav so it's pretty much equivalent to a musketeer in melee but they move at six speed so they get in your face if your cavalry they wreck you even if your infantry because you're in stuck in melee mode they wreck you uh, it's a really strong unit as long as there's not a huge mass uh, in front of them. Because if you are fighting a huge mass, of course the rear ranks will be able to shoot you at range. And Roleros have very low HP, so you will get obliterated. But the reason it's good here is that if you're getting pressured in H2, the opponent doesn't have, you know, a big, a, a gigantic mass. Often than that, they will attack you with like a reasonable mass, and Rodleros will be able to do good with that. And the thing I would say is, when you see seven rods to defend yourself, what you want to have is 150 food and 150 coin, and be ready to call the Minutemen, because the Rodlero is snare and kill anything that counters in melee. And if they want to retreat, the Rodlero will snare, and the Minutemen will kill anything that that stands in the way. Okay, got it. And then obviously Irish Brigadiers are just a really strong musket, 500 coin. I think you get nine of them, right? So just a nice yeah. card. Honestly, to me, it's like, all right, your opponent forced you to like cancel H3. You're stuck in there and you just want to haymaker leave me alone shipment. This is your shipment. Okay. Um, so you, you send these guys, you get a, a scary a mass around like you can have like uh some hussars in there uh or irish brigadiers you can basically uh 
use these guys as your main infantry part where we have some hustle laying around. Uh, especially if your opponent decides to go for mass spikes or something. They get promotions, which means if you make a lot of units around them and you protect them, they can get really, really strong. Actually, veteran musketeer is strong uh, with promotion in H2. So th it's a very really interesting shipment and definitely a leave me alone shipment. Like, you, you don't want to mess with that. Right. Okay. All right. So what are these other tech shipments then in H2 that you're trying to send? <clears throat> My three other shipments, and again, as I said, there will be a ton of debate about that, but Cav HP, okay. Advanced Arsenal, and House of Trastamal. Okay, so, so I'm going to assume everybody knows about Advanced Arsenal. It gives you those obtainable techs, and, you know, Cav HP is 15%. Let's talk about Trastamara. So this card uh, makes your Egypt cheaper and faster than most ships. So, the wording is weird, so let me explain that. Imagine you're in age three. You have sent, let's just say that, three villagers and just 700 coin. You can send any shipments you want in age three, one, or two. Imagine you send capitalism. Like, don't do that. But capitalism, action, and five villagers. And then you send two falconets. Even if those are H1 or H2 shipments for most of them, they will count as a shipment. What's important is the age you have received them in. If you received all of these shipments in H3, they count. And the idea is for each shipment, your next age up is 100 resources uh, less expensive. And it's um, distributed uh, only with your uh, the price of your agent. So if your agent costs like a bit more coin, you it will reduce the coin a bit more. If your agent costs a little bit more food, it will reduce food accordingly. Um, most agents tend to cost a bit more food than coin anyway. Uh, but in the case of H four, for example, it's two thousand food and one thousand. 200 coin, it will reduce food more than coin. Okay. It also makes your age up faster. So what it means is if you're stuck in this age and have to send shipment, and if you send basically all of the other shipments except Advanced Arsenal, for example, you can have basically the, uh, the Exile Prince age up, and sometimes you really need to get to age 3. And the price to pay is you use a shipment to get there. So sometimes you don't have a shipment in H3. But with Spain, you get access to Skirm and you get access to Lancers. So sometimes this card can be your saving grace, even from H2 to 3, if you're stuck in there. And it's even a decent card to send if, you, if you've sent a lot of shipments in H3 and want to go to H4 because the time reduction will always stay here, and sometimes you want to fast stage up to four. So it's really interesting shipment. It's much more used in uh, logistician decks, because in logistician deck you will spam age one shipment and sometimes age two shipments to get together. So just a quick, for, for people watching this video, the logistician, what it does is every age one shipment there is all of them you put them in your deck whatever they are when you send them and the logistician age up has finished all of these cards on top of uh, bringing what they usually bring they will give you directly you don't have to gather it 150 food 100 wood and 75 coin and if this card gives you resources in the, uh, for example, the 300 resources card, they will also get directly de deposited in your bank account. You don't have to gather it, it goes directly. This strategy is mostly used for um, rushes in H2, but what House of Trastamara and, uh, enables you to do is imagine you have sent like 10 shipments 
suddenly your age up becomes like about 700 food and 500 coin and it's almost instant so it's really nice when you have this logistician you did some damage but you feel like the opponent is like turtling too much and you can't be you won't be able to beat them you can just go to h3 and get access to artillery and finish the game that way it's mm -hmm. really strong uh and i've used it multiple times in tournaments i don't recommend it to new spain players because you really need to understand what what the limitation of h2 spain is this is why we're going too far the ff but even in an ff you will get you can be stuck in an age and this card is your get out of age free uh card so i know that it reduces the cost of the age like you said 100 resources split between the food and the coin but is the age up also made like is it just like say 50 seconds off of the age up like no matter so what or is it does it increase the speed every single time increasing the speed every single time it reduces by 8.5 percent the speed so if you have sent 10 shipments i think it's additive i'm not sure about that but it's 85 percent faster um so you, you age up like you you would not believe the, the the speed of the age up when you have finished a lot decision like it's ridiculous in 50 seconds you're, you're in 15 seconds sorry you're aged up it, it's just ridiculous okay so so then there's also potential for you know a fast industrial based around this card as well just because you know you're sending in your cards you're in age three like you're saying, you can you can send this in, and, and you have a much cheaper H4 option as well that gets there that much faster. Um, right. Exactly, and this is this is why it's such a great uh, shipment because even it's, if it's an H2 shipment, it still can get some use in H3. Keep in mind, fast industrial implies you send a few shipments in H3, so it wouldn't be interesting. Like you need to get stuck in an age, but if you're stuck in an age, whether you want it or not, by the way. This card can help you reach the next age much faster. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, anything else to add in age two in terms of cards? Or is this your... No. Okay. Th this, is, this is my deck. Okay, got it. So now in age three. <clears throat> age three, I'd say this is where the fun begins. Mm -hmm. uh, because in an FF, you have all of the strong shipment. And remember when I said they don't get ranged infantry shipments? Well, they do get artillery shipment, though, so that counts, right? So immediately, without even thinking, two Falconet is your first shipment. Why? Because this shipment single-handedly enables Spanish Fast Fortress or Spanish Pure Shield. There is so much Spanish build enabled by this shipment. Why? Because it's the Strong Age H3 European shipment. You can get there faster than in almost anyone else because your shipments can pretty much be sent back to back honestly and then you have this bad boy for 80 percent the xp cost of the others this is a no-brainer like you will send that shipment because it's just so good uh also spain is a heavy infantry sieve like you can see all of this you have 10 by 12 by 8 rod 9 rods uh Half of the mercenaries, what do you say, what half? All of the mercenaries that are not natives are heavy infantry. Uh, Spanish, like, it screams every infantry, heavy infantry, every every chance they get. So what is the counter to heavy infantry? Well, light infantry, skirmishes. And what counter skirmishes? Falconets. So this shipment single-handedly counters the counter of half of your roster it's a no-brainer to include okay i see <clears throat> the next order of business is how do i counter skirmishers even when i lost the two falcon shipment that i will eventually lose well this is where lancer coming lancers come into play lancers are an amazing unique unit for spain this is the second unique unit they get um Actually, the third, if you count the missionary. Um, the Lancer is a unit that deals significantly less damage to everything that is not infantry. So an H2 Hussar deals 30 damage per swing, and a Lancer deals 20. So it, you know, quite a significant difference. The, the difference is Lancer have a three-time multiplier against 
infantry. So pikemen, musketeers, skirmishers, it has two legs, it deals type three damage. So suddenly it hits as hard as two hussars. So what happened is if this cra crashes into an infantry mass and there's no cav to protect it, wins, no matter what it is. Maybe not Swiss pikemen or you know, some super heavy infantry, but uh, it will do a significant uh, amount of damage even to heavy infantry that is supposed to counter it. Um, and remember when I said like Dragoon had a hard time to 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 beat Rodleros because Rodleros are so fast. This is where we begin to see kind of a synergy. And yes, you can include nine Rodleros. This will be in there. Um, a synergy between those two cards. The five Rodleros are weak to Skirm, but really scare of Cav. Lancers are weak to Cav, but scare of infantry. So those two units can be the cornerstone of a very strong, what we call Rod Lancer uh, composition. Well, basically you have two melee, but one part of your melee counters all infantry and the other part counters all cavalry. And you just rush in and have this haymaker of melee units uh, that can pretty much destroy everything in space without requiring much micro except for putting the right melee unit on the right car on the right part of the army so really really, really strong uh, you know, uh, composition and the hard thing is if they try to you know maneuver around and the, those units well the two falcon are still blasting back there so it's a no-win situation where you have the three units on the field. Okay. Uh, and the rods also are fat. Uh, sorry, uh, the rods are also fast enough so that they can defend uh, the, the the artillery very efficiently from other cavalry flanks, and that is a very important point. Quick question: Are mm -hmm. you concerned about dragoon masses? Now I'm understanding that, like, obviously, in a in a scenario if you're having a strong timing attack in three and you're sending these shipments, they're not going to really have a mass of Dragoons, but, you know, with the Rodolero, you know, be able to catch um, a goon mass um, and prevent them from, from sniping your Lancers. So, it's a very, very good question. This is one of Spain's weaknesses, uh, but it will depend on the strength of your opponent. If your opponent never slips up and they always kite to perfection the Rodoleros, this will feel super hard for Spain. But keep in mind, you're in inch three. So in that case, you can begin to make skirmishers. Uh, Rod Lero and skirmishers is a very good counter to goons because no matter what you do, you always counter goons. And this is the equivalent of a skirm hald composition uh, with the Rod Lero having less attack but more mobility. Mm. So, yes, you can be very concerned about that composition, but then again, your opponents need to never slip up. Okay. If you look at his economy for just a second and your road levels just get, you know, in contact, you you could lose a, a mass of 20, uh, of 20 goons in a matter of seconds. Like, th these guys are not kidding. Okay. All right. All right, so uh, do we want to add the eight Rodolero here or the four Lancers as well to this? So this is where this is where things can, you know, vary. Um, in a Spanish fast fortress, like, you know, a, a standard deck, I would add the four, I would add the four Lancers. Uh, not necessarily the eight rods. Uh, I, would, uh, I would go for uh, the Lancer card, Caballeros. Okay, so this is, uh, oh, interesting. You get a trample, or you add to trample, uh, so, you add to hand attack. So it's an add one across the board, basically. So you remember when I said it's time three to infantry? Well, with this card, it's time four. But that's not the only thing. It also adds one rage. And this becomes extremely good because it means that, in a sense, two rows of lancers can attack at the same time. And this offset one of the weak weaknesses of you know uh, hand infantry and hand cav, which is they tend you know to clump 
around uh, the army of your opponent and just uncircle it. And then you have some, some Lancers or Roleros that just cannot reach and are just useless, uh, waiting for, you know, their buddies to die so they can join in the fray. And this offsets that a little bit. You won't get two rows exactly. I'd say it's more like one row and a half. But it definitely enables uh, bigger masses of Lancers to, to do their job. And you know how passing in this game is sometimes questionable? Mm -hmm. Having one more range for a melee unit is amazing. Right. It, it completely fixes the passing of, uh, of Lancers. Okay. Um... What's next then? This is this is a big, pretty big card, and, and you know you need to send that in the right in the right time for sure. But um, what would what would also be in H three? H three, I would add uh, cavalry combat. Okay, another fifteen percent. Yep. Okay. And from there, it will vary. Uh, if you want to have like a, a simple Spanish FF. You, know, you want to keep hammering down your opponents. I think you take your hammer and just swing, you swing, you swing until they die. Uh, you won't put economic cards in there. Uh, some people will add uh, marvelous here. I want, I do want to talk about this card because this card is really nice. Yeah, go ahead. Um, those set settlers will train sig when they say significantly faster. It's a third faster. So they train in about 17 seconds instead of the standard 25. Uh, basically, consider if you're 2 TC booming, well, with Marvelous Years, you're producing villagers at a speed of 3 TC booming. You just like get a phantom TC out of nowhere. Um, and during that time, the extra cost of making more villagers is also offset, offset by the fact that all of your villagers get a 20% gathering bonus across the board no matter what it is on all the map like you don't need like to be close to a tc for Mar like malta does you get 20 percent for 365 seconds which is about six minutes mm -hmm. it's over um, six minutes yeah yeah um and you really get a lot from marvelous here if you said marvelous i would consider either aging up with the bishop to get a second TC or making a second TC yourself. I would then add a thousand wood. Um, so are we taking Mar we, you would take Marvelous here? Just to kind of... I would take... Oh yeah, it's in, in this... I, I, so that would be the first option. It's a greedier option. Like, I've done some damage, I want to boom, I want to get there. But you're right in saying that we wanted to go for a Spanish effort that is simple. And to the point in Marvelous here might require a bit more experience with Spain. So we can remove a thousand wood, remove Marvelous, Marvelous here. Um, the thing I would go for is actually a strong mercenary shipment. You can send the seven armored pistoliers or the nine Highlanders at your convenience, if you prefer one or the other. Okay. Uh, the other one I would add if you want to have a strong French FF, is the new nine mounted infantry. Um, so this one is debatable. Uh, the reason I include it, and I like to include it, is uh, you will get uh, against a lot of skirmishers as Spain. Because people will want to counter your rods. And these guys are pretty nice as a ranged uh, counter to skirmishers. But this guy can also dismount. And you know how I said, like, Spain doesn't get ranged infantry cards? Well, this is a nine skirmisher shipments for 500 coin, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. Um, so we have one last shipment to add in H3. And this oh, is I'm already, excited. I'm excited. Um, the one I would add is archaic infantry combat oh i was not expecting that that i wasn't expecting interesting um, okay you could so i want to make a simple spanish ff um mm -hmm. there's a million way to go around the spanish ff once you get there you're super powerful and it's just like let's be honest it's, it's an embarrassment of riches like do i want to boom do i want to 
to just like have super strong shipment? Do I want to have a fort and go to H4? It's super nice to be H3, I spend. The point is getting there. Um, so this is a very aggressive uh, deck. It wants to get a mess and then push in H3. Um, personally, my, for example, my deck has Refrigeration uh, and Marvelous here. But if you want to have like a simple Spanish that you hammer people, it, it's a really, a really, really, ni really nice deck. Um, the reason why you include Ar Archaic Infantry Combat is what you are going for here is uh, Lancers and World Leros. Um, and this really enables your World Leros to, to hitch that much harder. Uh, keep in mind, it affects all hand infantry and foot archers. So imagine you have a native unit, for example, the, the Nootka Clubman is affected by it. Uh, the 2P Archer is affected by it. If it's an Archer, it's affected by it. Like, that's it. If it's a hand infantry too. Uh, by the way, for example, Rattan Shields are considered hand infantry. So it can even work on some shot infantry. And if you're playing team games, you can go in H2. The hand infantry attack card is in teams. And it works, for example, with Coyote Runners or Shimu Runners. Uh, or even the Ethiopian Shota Wire. So uh, keep in mind also Spain has a quite a strong team player. Um, I should have 21 card. So, oh, actually you're, you're right. I it, There's just nine shipments in H3, I miscounted. So you can add the nine rods, uh, the eight rods, sorry. I, I, I thought we wouldn't have the space. Uh, you, you can add yeah, nine, and, and I, you removed something. I removed the two uh, mercenary shipments, but do we? You want one, one mercenary shipment? <clears throat> you can even add them back. We we are not at ten. This is why I said like I miscounted. We're at nine shipments. Oh, you I see. Have I see. Okay, yeah. but now, um, but now I have a huge question, right? So mm -hmm. you have all these unit shipments stacked up, and I know we're going for this is a standard FF, but people are going to inevitably ask about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spanish gold. So yeah, Spanish gold is a very strong uh, card to add. I would not recommend adding it to a beginner Spanish FF. Here's what does why. it do? So what does it do? With every shipment, starting with this one, you will get a crate which contains precisely as of the 9th of October, 303, uh, uh, three, sorry, 330 coin. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the reason why I say at that moment, it's 330. It changed pretty much every other patch. Right, that's the meme. This yeah. shipment, like we had 350, we had 300, we had 310, now it's 330. Um, so it's a super strong shipment because from now on, all of your shipment will bring home 330 coin, which is amazing. It's almost a Falconet's worth of gold. Why do I don't would I vote including into the Spanish FF? Keep in mind, the Spanish FF, the way I I see it in a beginner deck is just you hammer people down until it works. You just send shipment after shipment after shipment. So the key about this is tempo. It's like being faster, bigger, stronger than your opponent. If you get outmassed by your opponent, this deck is not working basically. Um, and when you do that, do you want to slow down and get 330 coin with every shipment afterwards? Well, if you master Spain's tempo and you want to go for, you know, uh, this, this kind of risk taking with Spain, you can do it by any means. Um, it, it's a really strong shipment. It's included in a lot of Spanish FFs, but you tend to slow down. And speed is the name of the game for, for a Spanish FF. You want to get fast in H3. You may want to stabilize with a shipment, and five Lancers are amazing for that if, you, if you're getting pushed by infantry, nine rod B if you're pushed by Cav. Once you have stabilized, you have your two Falconets. You will make a mass of heavy infantry. We'll get there. Um, and basically, you keep pushing 
until you have done enough damage to your opponents so that you may want to uh yeah if you force them to turtle you may want to if you have sent a lot of shipman use trust a matter get to h4 and we'll get to h4 in, in a minute um or just you know have um sorry um uh, have just won the game or you can just you know uh, once you get h4 even go for a revolt and we'll touch on the revolt uh, Spanish has amazing role at the Chile revolt uh, and just try again and win the game but th the point of this deck is not really to slow down and Spanish gold does slow you down okay gotcha okay yeah I mean it's it's important for new players to know that like the goal is to win the game not to have like a pretty base and or you know like oh I want to you know, I want to get to this point in the game, you know, you can play treaty, right? Like in a, in a supremacy game, 1v1, you're trying to win. It, it's, it, you know, the goal is not to, you know, that's really no other goal that you're trying to attain. So you're right about the tempo um, for and sure. Keep in, keep in mind, like, this is not a deck that a Spain main with experience or thing would play because it's way too all in. Like you have no catch of cards except function. Um, to not really catch up, sorry, to, you know, to to just propel you into into the late game. Um, what you want, what you have here, like I want a bigger mass, and when my mass is big enough, I want to be it to be stronger with tech cards. Um, you, when you evolve past, you know, understanding the tempo of Spain and when you can slow down, and again, it all depends on how much damage you did to the opponent. Uh, is your opponent turtling? How you react to it? You will definitely trade in the nine skirmishers and nine highlanders and eight road leros for more economically focused shipments, I would say. And maybe the south, the southern. Would. We could also cover the two haciendas. Haciendas are honestly, in my opinion, now a build of its own, and I would not include it in a normal FF. Yeah, we wouldn't. We there don't really is... need to, you know, like, I feel like that immediately, you know, is going to start throwing us off, um, you know, to even talk about, you know, <laughs> the, because it's because now we're introducing mechanics from other sieves here, right? Yeah. So really fast, maybe to, to cover this, for 200, would you get two Haciendas, which is the Mexican uh, you know, farm that can spawn units sometimes and it enables you to spawn either cows settlers or soldados soldados is the preferred way of using haciendas basically what it enables you to do is when you click the soldado button you can add villagers to it you generate a soldado and the more villagers the faster the, the soldado spawns what enables you to, to, to do a, a build that is much more turtly, you don't need to be on the map, you can make soldados. And then you can use Spanish gold, uh, if, you, if you've sent it before, to get enough gold to get to H4. Without getting on the map, uh, you can ship, uh, ship uh, sorry, uh, unit shipments to complement soldados, such as lancers, because the soldado is a musketeer unit, and musketeers pair super well with lancers. Um, and you know, just from there, just spawn soldados, get to H4, and have a combo of like lancers, soldados, and heavy cannons because you'll ship the two factories, uh, or maybe just the two heavy cannons, and push from there. But it's not the build I want to show today for two main reasons. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be there in the game, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe it will right. be removed uh, or changed in a meaningful way because this build has been sometimes problematic um, because it's not really an interactive build you don't really can really you can counter it by killing the haciendas but like the devs tend to uh, fiddle around this with this build to a very recent build we don't know how it will let this used to be a free shipment now it's 200 wood if we recommend this build then next patch is become a thousand wood uh, to to send these <laughs> that yeah. would kill the build. Right. So I won't go into this build today. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so let's, uh, okay, let's we'll go into uh, go H4 then uh, to finish this out. 
um, because because now uh -huh. you know like you know just just to note for anybody watching like basically what we're saying is is that if you want to flex the build and you start to kind of learn a little bit more feel free to replace these merc card these merc cards for Spanish gold marvelous year probably more economically orientated cards that maybe yeah. would help you you know um, either catch up in the game if you fall behind or propel you into age four just understand that there's variability here like in any build but what we're trying to show you or what Dunamai is trying to show you is mass and upgrade and win yeah so really short eight rods nine highlanders nine mountain infantry out a thousand wood uh, marvelous year refrigeration in and that's it so we'd have like a much more rounded deck okay h4 two factories because it's pretty much standard with all european civ uh you want to add uh peninsula guerrillas by that point you will have skirmishes if you are getting to h4 um because maybe you had too much dragoons against you and 20 percent you know damage on all ranged infantry is amazing like that, that just face it it's amazing <clears throat> Then uh, it will depend. If you're a fan, because I know there's fans of uh, infinite shipments, you can add seven Lancers infinite. The one I would recommend is two heavy cannons. Again, you're in this logic of let's push and just, you know, deliver haymaker after haymaker after haymaker, and you're in H4 and you have a shipment. How about we just throw another haymaker? Let's just put two heavy cannons in there. If you ever get another shipment from fighting, Add Peninsula Guerrillas, you get 20% more on all the skirmishers that you have. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, and then, why two factories? Because I feel it's just standard in old European deck to have those factories. Um, if you do get caught in late game with this build, keep in mind you have Unction, Peninsula Guerrillas, and two factories. If you remove uh, the rods and mercenaries for like refrigeration, uh, Marvel is here to help with the boom and the salvan wood to get the two t the three TCs. You have a super strong eco behind it. Um, and uh, if you go the route of Spanish gold, uh, please consider adding the se infinite seven lancers to just have an infinite ship and then keep going with the three hundred. Okay, smart, and smart. Part. Okay, yeah, I see that. Uh, because you don't really lose all that much value compared to eight lancers. Uh, seven lancers is 1,400 resources. Most of the H3, uh, H4 infinite shipments are 1,200 resources. So it's a really strong shipment. And you will have upgraded your lancers by then. Because, you know, you have a lot of upgrade cards. You will have amazing lancers. So it's a really, really strong shipment. <clears throat> but that would be it for the build. Uh, for, for, the, for the deck, sorry. Um, do you want me to walk through the build uh, before we start the skirmish, or do you want to just have it? I want to ask time? you one more question. How would I edit this to have a water variant? Like, if I need to, if I'm on water, I need to have a little bit of water play. I need to be able to counter uh, my opponent who's using water. What would you change about this deck to make it more water orientated, or would you make an entirely new deck for naval? So, if you really want to focus naval to do water boom. Uh, just we can go of the remark that a lot of water cards are age one cards, and then you can think about the logistician. Like you can have fish market, you can have schooners uh, that are two really strong age one cards. You can keep spamming three hundred wood and get that insane amount of votes. Uh, so you could do a logistician deck where your focus is not really on rushing but more on making boats. Uh, this was a deck that was very popular when the Logistician first launched. Um, you can even have advanced dock in there to defend your uh, you know, your fishing boat because it doubles the damage of the dock when you garrison fishing ships into it. Uh, so you can have really a nice water shipment, but if you want to uh, pivot away from the, the stock standard Spanish deck, I would remove Anction. I would remove um, the two mercenary cards in each three, and I would go for in each two uh, the two caravels. 
and in each three the free gift. And then it will depend. Do you want to ca to contest water, or do you want to be on water? Yeah. So what? Uh, uh, how would you? How would you choose? If you want to con if you want to con just contest water, uh, you could add. Uh, so you don't really want to be there, but you want to make sure your opponent is not there. You can just add back a land card, like a, a, a mercenary, uh, a mercenary variant. Uh, this one is fine. Um, if you want to be on water, I would consider having uh, in age uh, two. Sorry, a rendering plant to really buff your fishing boats and. Uh, Obviously, you could like sacrifice some H three uh, one H three shipment to get schooners. I feel like with the reduction in wood costs since the DE, it's not mandatory to send schooner to water boom. Uh, what you could do is also replace advanced arsenal for six hundred wood. You want wood more wood to be able to water boom. Uh, or if you still want to go with the Spanish FF, remove 600 wood and get 1k wood in there, uh, so you can have like more uh, more wood to, to boom with the boats. Okay. But yeah, two two vels, one frigate is your stock standard, and then you just you know flex around that. Do you want more eco on water? Do you want less uh, eco and just you know being there to counter? And then you go on land. Feel free to you know. I really want to emphasize what you said is that. This is a base, and then we pivot out of that, uh, out of it. Like, you want more eco? Just remove the weaker uh, eight rod shipment. Maybe the four lenses too. Add more eco. The 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 core of the build is really th um, the the seven hundred food that you the wood. Sorry, no, <laughs> the last one coin that you get to get to H three, and then you know strong. Uh, Wait, where's two falcon? Oh yeah, falcon is still there. Uh, the strong two falcon shipment, the lancers, the rods. Uh, I mean, this trifecta of nine rods, five lancers, two falconets, really terrorizing your opponent, enabling you to do really uh, whatever you want afterwards. That you want to go for eco, do you want to crush him even more, do you want to counter him in the water. The world is yours, Joe. Okay, so, you know, if you're watching, go ahead and, you know, you can take a screenshot. This would probably be, in Dunamai's opinion, maybe a, a sort of more universal water deck. Um, as he says, though, you can remove the 1k wood for mercenary shipment. Um, you know, if you're just wanting to keep the opponent off water, you can get rid of the rendering plant if you're not, you know, wanting to boom yourself. But, you know, if you're already taking control of the water, might as well use it. So, and then, so that's your water deck. If we're going to switch back to the land variant, it's going to have... We're gonna include unction in there. Um, oh, sorry, that's the standard. We're gonna get back into what did we have? Uh, advanced, uh, I have advanced arsenal in there. Right. Um, some would say it's greedy, and I, I agree, but I like it. Um, and then back and to the our, our great. yeah, and then our <laughs> uh, again. Uh, I know some Spain men will heavily disagree, but. It really gives you uh, an idea of what playing to Spain's strength is. Like having those units on the field really fast, really strong. Um, it, it feels amazing. Right. So in, you can go ahead and take a picture of this as your generally standard land deck and feel free to play around. So let's. Um, so as, we, as I prep a, a skirmish match here, um, you know, just to let everybody know, it's going to be just a 1v1 on easy, standard map, nothing crazy. You might want her to have two different teams, though. Good call. And then <laughs> go ahead and walk Go ahead and walk me through what our uh, uh, card order mm -hmm. is going to be before we, we hop into this. All right, so the card order for the Spanish FF, uh, at least the one I consider standard is you're going to have three villages. You're, you're going to want a TP map. For mm -hmm. this one, okay. Three villages, capitalism, seven hundred coin, seven hundred wood, two falconets, and then in my variant of it is five lancer, four lancers, and then flex depending of what the opponent has sent. Okay. To counter. All right. 
the idea is you will supply the heavy infantry to defend, to you know, close this trifecta. More often than not, it will be Rodleros. If you see that there's a lot of cap, you can switch to four lancers for the nine rods, obviously. Um, and then what I say is just from there, you just balance what you have. Um, the, the, the next thing I would send is the mounted infantry. Before DE, it used to be uh, eight rods pretty much every time. You would just send them. I, I like the new the new option. Uh, it gives you skirmishers. It's a bit more uh, convenient to move around uh, because you have like now this range infantry mass that you didn't have before. Um, after that, uh, you can send the. Uh, oh, you have the eight rod. Sorry, uh, we 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 changed it. I was looking at that mine that had refrigeration, uh, so you can send eight rods right after, uh, and then. I would consider gathering coin to send uh, a mercenary shipment. Okay. Uh, if you don't have a lot of coin, the mounted infantry, you can transform them to skirmishers or counter skirmishers with a mounted variant. Or, you know, for a good old haymaker, nothing beats uh, Scottish Highlanders. Right. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and go into it. So just so everybody knows, it's going to be on easy. It's just AI, so we're not messing up the build, and I'm not really going to be gathering any treasures just so we can get it a you know, a general idea of the timeline here. And then, you know, it, you know, just know that treasures will probably speed up the process. So we'll, we'll play on Dakota. A really good point that you said is do gather treasures with Spain. Uh, you have a dog for it. You have a, I mean, you get an explorer and a dog. You're very strong in age one. People will regret it if you, uh, if you attack. Uh, if you attack them, because the dog will completely fuck them up. Uh, the dog has no negative multiplier against heroes, so <laughs> it's gonna be rough. So, sorry, I want to see. What you want to do is you will get 200 wood together. Uh, you, you put them on hunt. You want to have uh, all new villagers and two of your villagers gathering wood because you want a house. Okay. All right, so all on hunt, and then we have two here. We immediately want to go for the TP. Yes, sir. Uh, so you want all new ones to, to, to wood until you have a hundred wood. You just want to make a house, basically. All new vills to wood? Wood, wood, yeah. Okay. Then you will remove them at 100 wood. <clears throat> Obviously, more often than not, there are wood, so uh, you don't have the wood yet, so you can remove, you can unqueue one villagers and send three villagers. Okay, so you oh, are, uh, you, you so do have some downtime. Uh, more often than not, you don't. Maybe we were a bit low, uh, lower, uh, slow on the moving around with crate because I was talking about treasures. Sorry about that. Uh, if you send uh, villagers, you will have just enough, maybe a bit of downtown. You could uh, send also one more if you see you're going to be a bit low on, uh, on the wood department. Sorry about that. Uh, you can build a house now. Build it yeah, at least with two villagers. Keep herding your hunts. Yeah, that's right. All right, and then what do we want to age up with? Uh, you want to age up uh, with uh, 15 villagers. All right, so that those quick shipments are coming in. So do we want to send any of these other age one cards here? Uh, capitalism. Okay. So do you keep the dog with the explorer when you play, or, or do you use them to? So what what you can do is like the explore the exploration pattern is you can have the dog and the explorer be relatively close, and if you see a big treasure, converge to it. But you have you still have you know explored uh, more of the map, or you can if you know for example it's a map with like 
low value treasures that you can pick up yourself because the guardians are not that big um you will have uh an easier time just sending the dog around and having the, the explorer so yeah exactly the governor you you you, you know you knew it already you will age up with the governor okay. why will you age up with the governor because it gives you 200 coin and the amazing thing with this is between the coin you will get from capitalism and the one with the governor with just 700 coin you'll be all right because you'll have all the coin you need to get to each three so no coin needed uh on the on the gather bot you can okay. focus just on food do i queue up I'll another settler or do am i just focused on the 15 <clears throat> trying to age up uh you can queue another settler you will have Mo just way more than enough food. There, there won't be a problem with that. So, bank up that shipment. It will be your 700 coin shipment. Okay. Preparado. Lo haré cazador. Sí, cazador. Cazador. Just as a reminder, these herds can move every eight seconds. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, time to move it back in. So that way, now I've controlled pretty much three hunts here. Can't really raid this. Um, and then if you see me uh, moving the, the settlers around, that's shift clicking. So, you know, I'm holding down the shift and then telling it what to do after it does that action. So I could tell it move here. Then after that, I shift here. So then he'll do that and then he'll shoot that. So that's how that works. Uh, you're very right to say that it's super important, the Spanish FF. Most opponent will guess this is a Spanish FF and they will try to counter your in H2. So that means you want to have your hands close nearby. So you don't go aggressive on the outpost, and not for this build at least. Uh, because again, if you're going on the ladder with this build, uh, and I, I do recommend you get some experience out of it first, but uh, send, by the way, send 700 coin right away. Good call. Uh, your next shipment will be 700 wood. Um, and what should these settlers gather, be doing in transition now? Uh, you keep gathering food to keep making villages, keep making villages. Until you have 700 coin, you gather, keep making villages, sorry. Okay. So we should discuss about that. Uh, so, yeah, keep hunts close by because you will get counters and you can give it, then keep the tower closer to the chest if you want to, really. Um, close to the TC, sorry. Uh, because you will get attacked in H2. The people will guess you're going to a Spanish fifth. This is the most standard build. You use uh, at least five villages to gather that. Okay. Um, and keep making builds. You, you'll be Even with the 700 coin on the ground right now? Uh, it's a bit late now, so don't tra train it. But if you keep training it, you can you can have 18 by the time it's, uh, it's all gathered and you don't have a lot of downtime. Okay. You now can... Yeah. Uh, for Hussar is your most standard shipment. If you want to be greedy, you can go for the covered wagon, but for Hussar, for that. Uh, <clears throat> so now what you want to do is to gather the wood. Uh, have people on coin now, I would say about five. And with the, with the wood you gather, you want to have two racks, a market, um, and uh, two racks, the market, research hunting dog, and the rest goes on houses. What's the big thing you have in the... Oh, it's two racks, all right. Uh, <coughs> uh, so obviously, keep scouting your opponent. Uh, it's very important to scout your opponent in the Spanish FF, especially in H2. You really want to know what he's doing. Uh, for example, what you're going to train now is road Leros out of these racks. Okay, and so just so everybody sees the cost. Um, All right, so that's 10 in Q. You're going to make, yep, you're going to put some villages on wood uh, and make another house Hola. because you will be popped when the Hussars come in. Okay. Uh, so train a village. You have a village in queue. That's that's wonderful. Um, what you want to do is get research hunting dog and make another house. You will get popped more often than not with Spain. 
Uh, the reason being like you will send a lot of shipments and people then well, sorry, shipments tend to overpop you. Uh, you can keep training on the, the, the two batch of world arrows uh, and just not just one from two racks. And I'll tell uh, one from two racks. I'll tell oh, you I why. See. Okay, yeah. Because you want to overpop now. Uh, now send the falconet. Um, so macro is going to be a little bit a little bit tight on the wood here uh, i think you will lose the first batch of road but it's fine the second one will come in make your house as soon as possible oh i see what you mean so then that way you would have queued up and now you finish your rods yeah and with that you can push right away and what's push the next right uh we fucked up a little of the micro so you can buy a hundred wood uh, and now you will stand, uh, you will build a house, put a bit of more settlers on coin, on the wood, sorry. And from there, you will send, uh, sorry, you will queue some villagers and send five lances. But you can already push with what you have. Like, uh, around, uh, I'd say, a minute earlier, uh, not really a minute, no, 30 seconds, earlier, about nine minutes. Yeah. I mean, we were stomping your... and talking, right? Like, so everybody just understand this is just to demonstrate what your order is. Um, but yeah, definitely probably a minute faster. Keep making houses. You're going to you're gonna get pops all the time, as pain because of those shipments. So don't worry if it happens. It happens all the time. One trick you can have is put... I, I think Sarshagat did it like by instinct, and this is exactly right. Put your military gather garrison point to the tower, so then you can direct uh, what you what you have, and then so it's important that it's you know an AI that always you, you want to see, want to be able to talk about it. But the idea is when you're gonna maneuver around this build, your two falconets is your win condition. So you want to like really concentrate on it, have your Cavalry be the harasser, uh, the, the hussars can raid uh, or join the lances, you know, being a, a hammer taking down the infantry. And you run the rods being around your falcon as being around to maneuver, to scare the dribbles, go back, uh, thank hussars and stuff like that. So it's really basically the, the, the gist of the build. What you would do afterwards. Uh, depends on if you've lost a lot of mass or not. Uh, from there, you keep training rods. You will add uh, multiple on wood. Uh, if you have a thousand wood, this is where it gets really nice. You can send the thousand wood, get some uh, inf more infrastructure. Uh, like with the first 500, basically, you can get infrastructure and houses and research like eco checks, like uh, steel traps and placer mines. And with the other 500 you can like uh get a stable um if you have kept your mass and you have researched as such like that you said like instinctively uh, vet rods you can uh after your four lancers get uh archaic infantry combat which are really strong rods obviously this is not as useful if you're against a lot of skirms and if you're against a lot of skirms you might want to go for four lances and then uh, either caballeros if you're against a lot of infantry uh, or uh, cavalry combat to give a little bit more hp to those lancers to have them be able to do their job if you're uh, with a lot of dragoons and your opponent micros them well, this is the moment you can switch to skirmishers. And if you then need skirmishers right away, you can have uh, the mounted infantry to have an emergency nine skirmishers better, essentially. Keep in mind, if you want them to not be countered by dragoon, you need to dismount them. And this is very important, and it takes time. Right, right. Okay, so, I mean, a lot to cover, but, like, you know, um, it's it's kind of interesting, you know, you're using, just to kind of cover that and, and surmise it, the Rodalero are going to be used as your anti-cav, right, to cover your Falconet. The Hussar mm -hmm. that you get from the Age Up are going to be using to counter any sort of range infantry, light range infantry specifically, to help with the Rodalero as well as raid your opponent. And Lancers are your general catch-all 
against the infantry mass along with the falconets as well so you know this is mm -hmm. a pretty dynamic push here and then of course you know your economy like you're going to put them on the back foot so your economy should keep going make sure you're going to keep building houses get gang saw um and then hunting dogs steal traps and then eventually get a stable yeah, we completely forgot to cover that, but you'll get, get uh, quite a bit of food in transition to two, from two to three. You, you maybe you saw that. You can definitely get great, at least great coat and gang. So, mm -hmm. uh, this, because you get a lot of pop really quick, this is really wood hungry. Uh, you can consider adding 600 wood in there and a thousand wood if you really need it. Uh, more often than not, because you have capitalism and there's a lot of coin extra you're floating, you can just buy a bit of wood. Uh, that's no big deal mm -hmm. uh, and obviously if you really keep buying more wood consider just moving more settlers to wood right. to support it it's a good sign when you have to move settlers to wood the reason is well your pop is still high it means you're winning so it, it's a it's a great problem to have mm -hmm. yeah um, and then just really quick I wanted to ask I, I know I extinct instinctively did it but I meant to ask you when when do you want to like as soon as possible you want to get Vet Rodolero or is that just kind of you feel it out I'd say when you when you have like your first batch your second batch and maybe you sent nine rods in the past this is what you, when you want to have it also keep in mind this is also depending on what your opponent is playing. If your opponent is heavy into Cav, upgrading them makes them scary. It makes your opponent's Cav mass less useful. Obviously, if your opponent goes full Lancers, you don't want to invest in Rodlero's death. No, it's full, uh, sorry, skirmishes. Uh, you don't want to invest in those Rodlero's that much. And in that case, you would tend to go for upgrades on the Lancers uh, from the home city uh, and adding in a bit more skirmishes that are available to do you in H3 SP. Okay, gotcha. Um, any sort of, uh, um, well, before we get into that, let's, uh, let's just quickly go over what that card order was. So mm -hmm. for those, you know, as you're watching, you're going to go three bills. Um, so the key is, is that you're going to want to have um you're going to be gathering your food right and then you're going to immediately build a trade post and then you're also going to make sure that you're tasking your settlers to wood you're going to gather for 100 wood to get a house your first house down because it's not going to be a 12 10 12 over 10 population space right so you're going to go three bills queue up and then you're going to eventually age up with 15 bills with the governor your second shipment's capitalism for a coin trickle then in transition you're going to be sending that 700 wood so you would have gathered to 1200 and then food, and then at the point after the age uh, up. Yep. Yeah, coins, then wood. Yep. Yeah. Yep, coin. <clears throat> so then you would have automatically trickled the 300 coins, then 700 coin, and then you're going to go into age up. Make sure you're still queuing settlers until that 700 coin arrives. So you should end up with 18. And then, so then you get your 700 wood in transition. This is going to help you put down more infrastructure, market, two barracks, and then some houses. And feel free to buy. Um, some wood if you need to get an extra house to make sure you're not popped task about maybe five to six sellers onto coin as well rest on food and then from there you're going to go ahead and, and ship um, you're going to get your hussar and then you're going to start queuing Rodolero. Um obviously it's dependent upon what your opponent is doing but you need to protect the falconets mm -hmm. because you're going to send the falconets as well and then from there yes you go from there you go from there, uh, keep in mind, if you see, for example, they're against Inca and they already have a mass of jungle bowmen, let's say, you can go for a Rax and a Stable. Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind that the Lancers is already veteran upgrading straight from the get-go in H3, so you can already train veteran Lancers right when you're in H3. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, these guys, they, they mean business when, you, when you're against uh, infantry. Yeah. And then from there, you can send the, the extra Lancers, right? So to counter all infantry, I mean, and then it, it's super flexible from here. So like Dunamai was saying, uh, you have upgrade cards. You can even, you know, as you're gathering, you, you, you feel like you have enough population space. You know, you can go ahead and put down another TP to keep up the tempo. And then you just bully down your opponent and then eventually win out. But everything is dependent upon protecting these two in terms of their timing. So um, I think that pretty much covers the build order. Um, is there any sort of specific... Um, uh, matchups that you want to highlight just to kind of end us off um, <clears throat> any sort of bad matchups that you know like give me a good matchup and a bad matchup just that somebody needs to be looking out for 
So, personally, I consider, for example, Japan to be a good matchup for Spain. Because uh, if, for example, he does a Shrine Boom, uh, you will uh, completely obliterate the guy. Because by the time the Shrine Boom, Shrine Boom has paid back, uh, your Two Falconet will have pretty much leveled the base of your opponent. Uh, so that would be a, a, a pretty strong matchup for Spain. Because basically, your his late H2 will be able to crush you, but he cannot get there in time for your FF to hit. <clears throat> some, say, uh, some say Spain is one of the few counter to Hausa. Uh, because again, Hausa can get a gigantic mass in H2, but by the time this gigantic mass is there, you have the two Falcon shipments, you have the, the, the rods. And rods are pretty fast. Javelin Riders have a terrible animation that they're amazing in terms of DPS, but they have a terrible animation. And you don't want to be stuck in your animation against Rod Leros because they will, you know, completely destroy you. Uh, <clears throat> and the Fulani Archers have very low HP, which makes them vulnerable to two Fox. So it's pretty good against the FF. Um, a bad matchup, in my humble opinion, would be Ottoman. And every uh, civilization that has a strong, fast-hitting H2 rush. Uh, the reason is, with this build, for example, there's no town militia in it. Uh, even though you could consider adding like a variant against very aggressive sims. Uh, and the idea is, remember when I said like this is an embarrassment of riches in H3, you have so much you can do. The point is getting there. Well, tournament will like forbid you from getting there. And right. that's the problem because then you're stuck in each two. Well, yeah, you have amazing resource shipments. You can have the five veils, which is, by the way, something you do send when you're stuck in each two after the, uh, the, the, you, you've sent the rods and the mercenaries. And uh, Ottoman will forbid you from getting there. Uh, we can also say the hot rush will, will really. Uh, ruin your day as Spain. And this is part of like the skill of the Spanish main to know where, for example, you can out-muscle one of those Civ with a logistician in H2. When you can um, survive it through the use of cars like Town Militia, Seven Rods, that we say, like we said, all the new uh, Irish Brigadiers. And, you know, uh, surviving or withering the storm uh, and surviving until you get to this h3 moment and when you get to h3 and he for example your ottoman opponent has like janissaries and and Ava's gunners well just send five lancers and I, I promise you the result will be quite amazing uh, <laughs> and keep in mind you need to send uh, the militiamen uh, right at the same time and you can you can push out some pretty nasty messes with just the five lenses. Okay, nice. Okay, <laughs> well, you know, thank you so much, Dunamai, for lending us your expertise and really giving us an in-depth look at Spain. I really hope that all of you who are listening in enjoy it. And if you know if you're a new player and then or if you're new to Spain at least, you know, hopefully that this information was really helpful for you. If you have any more questions or you have any thoughts for us, feel free to you know join us on the Discord and ask, or you can. Um, you can go ahead and leave a comment and we'll make sure to get right back to you. Um, and, you know, we'll probably cover even more content um, about Spain and uh, any other civs that we cover if there's other build orders that you'd like to see. But right now, this is just a general spotlight, just going over the, the, the broad overview of the civ and demonstrating a, a standard opening build order for you. So really hope you enjoy it. Go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment, help us with the traction. Thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you in the next one.